Folks, welcome back to another episode of Coffee, Tea, and Crime. Our episode today is going to be the kidnapping and murder of Kathy Nishiyama. Folks, I've done some other episodes for this part of the country, specifically Dixon, Davison, and Montgomery County. It's November 16th, 1981. 16-year-old Kathy Nishiyama. She's going to high school at Northwest there in Clarksville, Tennessee. Got everything in front of her in her life. And what we're going to see transpire in a about a 24-hour period is not only going to be one of the most horrid crimes ever committed in Tennessee, it's also going to involve some questionable actions and inactions by the Dixon County Sheriff's Department. Now you're going to hear me talking about some little towns like Charlotte, Erin, Dixon, the bigger town of Clarksville, and you're going to be hearing about highways like 49 and 48 and 149 and 13 you're probably going to find out more information about Dixon County and the surrounding area than you ever wanted to know, I'm sure. But it's all going to be important for this story. I was a junior at Austin P. State University when this happened. So this crime, where this crime's going to begin, not more than a few miles from where I was staying there on the campus of Austin P. The Dixon County Jail is located in the city of Charlotte, which is in the north part of Dixon County. And the high drama that we're about to see unfold, that's where it's going to begin. Prisoner there. He's also a trustee, which means he gets privileges beyond what the normal prisoner would get. Now this trustee, he's supposed to be at the state pen up in Nashville. Uh, I don't know if it was overcrowdedness or what, or if this inmate had connections or whatever, but he was allowed to do his sentence at the Dixon County Jail. Now he was working on the squad cars for the sheriff's department and he evidently was helping around the chief deputy's house and farm now the chief deputy fellow named Carol Pfizer don't know for exactly if this is true but he was I believe the brother-in-law to the sheriff Doyle Wall Now, it's November 16th, it's about 6 p.m., and whatever kind of work that this inmate was doing, we're just going to call him Eddie, how about that? The reason we're going to call him Eddie is because that's his first name, and the reason I'm even going to use his first name is because he was born and raised in Dixon County just like I was. And we went to school, and he was a few years older than me. He was around my older brother's age. But I would known him just for as long as I could remember. So, 6 p.m., Chief Deputy 
he gives the car keys to the sheriff's department car to Eddie. And that's Dixon County Cruiser number five. Got the number five on each side of the squad car. So he tells Eddie to head on back to the jail. Now that is really a trustee. You're going to give him a marked car with a cage, and which also means that those doors can't be opened from the inside. So that's a lot of responsibility you've given to a man that can't follow the laws of the state of Tennessee. And oh, by the way, uh, I don't know what all Eddie was in the penitentiary for, but I know he'd had some uh, run-ins with some sexual assaults. So, not a really good record, I don't reckon, to be letting him have that marked car, but the chief deputy, he did it just the same. Now, Eddie had a choice. He'd go back to the jail like he was told to, or he could do something different, and that's what he did. He jumped on Highway 48, and he headed towards Clarksville, or somewhere up that way anyways. Now folks, the chief deputy shouldn't be letting an inmate drive a marked squad car. Now if the chief deputy was doing it, you just got to assume that the sheriff okayed it. And if the sheriff didn't okay it, then the sheriff should have known about it. Because just remember this, when you're in charge, everything is your fault. So now, you've got a fella that, I'm just going to be honest with you now, he, he wasn't a very good fella. He never had been, never was. When I get through telling this story, you're going to be convinced that he's, he's far beyond not a good fella. But just keep in mind, we got the sheriff of a county and his second in command, and they're allowing this to happen, allowing this fella to go rip roaring across all at least three counties in a Mark Squad car. Richard Hughes was working at the Coca-Cola company, the plant there in Dixon. Now it was down there on Cowan Road. Now, he left work about 6 p.m. and he was heading home. Now he lived out there on Jarman Hollow Road, which is up there in Palmyra, which is, I believe, just inside the Montgomery County line. Now, according to the appellate courts of Tennessee, Mr. Hughes took Highway 49 home. Now, while he's traveling northbound up 49, he passes a marked squad car, white with green stripes, and got the number five on it. Well, he notices that squad car turns around and starts following him. Now, at some point, while he's on Highway 49, patrol car lights him up. Now, this is after he's done turned on the German Holler Road when the blue lights pop up. Now, he sat in his car for just a couple minutes, and the officer didn't come up to the car, so he walked back to the officer. Well... Eddie asked to see his license. And Mr. Hughes gives him his license. And then uh, he asked Mr. Hughes if he knew how to get back to Dixon County. Now by the time he stops him, that's probably somewhere around 6.30 p.m., and that's right around 149 there, Highway 149. 
Now that Jarman Hollow Road, now it runs on both sides of 149, but uh, just from the description I read, evidently this stop was right around uh, the main road there. So we know at about 6.30, Eddie, in his Dixon County Sheriff's car, is up in Palmara on Highway 149 and Jarman Hollow Road. Now, a fella named Terry Taylor, he was crossing the Cumberland River there at Cumberland City. Now, it was about 6 p.m. on the 16th of November. Now, he was heading to Palmyra and he was taking Highway 149 to get there. Now he stopped at a friend's house for about 20, 25 minutes and was chatting. Then he gets back in his vehicle and he's heading to Clarksville and he's still on Highway 149. Now when he gets about six miles from Clarksville, he notices headlights of a vehicle coming up behind him in a hurry. Well, the blue lights come on and he pulls off the road. Now he waits a couple of minutes and the officer hadn't got out of the car to come up there. So he gets out of his Jeep and he walks back to the patrol car. And he's got his driver's license in his hand. Now, this officer sitting in this squad car, he says he don't need to see Mr. Taylor's license. He says the reason he stopped him, he says, I'm from Dixon County. I was on a big drug bust. I got lost and I want to know how to get back to Dixon County. Well now, Mr. Taylor, he, he tells this officer how to go further down 149 and then he can get on Highway 13 and from there he'll get on Highway 48 and he can get back to Dixon County. So now both of them head off in the same direction down 149 heading, Miss Taylor's heading to Clarksville. Now Miss Taylor's going along and he sees another friend of his out in his yard. So he pulls off there and he stops and they talk for about five or six minutes. So Miss Taylor, he gets to heading again on 149. Now he gets to the hilltop market there on 149 and he sees that same patrol car sitting on the edge of the parking lot. So he pulls in behind it and the driver of the squad car gets out and asks him, he goes, is this the intersection where I'm supposed to turn? And Mr. Taylor tells him, no, you got to go down to the next intersection and then you'll make your right hand turn. Now, later on at trial, Mr. Taylor would testify that the fellow in the defendant's chair, old Eddie, that that was the fellow that was in that squad car, the white Plymouth with green stripes. And he said at the time this was going on, he said the driver was not wearing a uniform, that his shirt and his pants were in army type work clothes. And also he had long hair down around his shoulders. Now at 7 p.m., Mr. Taylor says that the fella in the squad car drove away from the hilltop market and he is heading towards Clarksville on 149. And of course, that next intersection, which would have been Highway 13, where Eddie should have made his turn if he wanted to go back to Dixon County. Now, when Mr. Taylor gets home about 45 minutes later, he called the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office 
and he told them about it. Said he got stopped by a fellow in a patrol car, didn't have a uniform, said he was from Dixon County, and he was lost. And he described the car to the Sheriff's Department, Montgomery County. And he told them, he says, you know what, I don't think that fellow was the police, and I don't think he should be out stopping people. The fellow with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department, Sergeant Nelson, he said that call came in at 8.30 from Mr. Taylor. Now he checked, Montgomery County had three squad cars out on patrol and everything was okay with them. Well then he contacts Stewart County, Houston County, and Dixon County. Ask them, are you missing a squad car? And all three of the counties said, no, we're not missing a squad car. Now that sounds like there's an issue, doesn't it? Because Dixon County is missing a squad car and they're missing a trustee. But then again, now if you called the Dixon County Sheriff's Department, the dispatchers that would take that call, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know they's missing a, a car or a trustee. 11 o'clock that night, he says that Dixon County would put out a bulletin and that it would say that they were missing a patrol car, a four-door 1978 Plymouth, white with green stripes, full blue light bar across the roof and oh by the way there's a trustee driving it we don't know where he's at so now at 7 p.m or a little after we do know that eddie and that squad car was at the hilltop market on highway 149. 